So I've got the first job to be using the T66 on. It's actually for a family friend. And uh, unfortunately, during this week, the transmission on my truck died. Um, just lost all drivetrain and I drifted over to the side of the road with the excavator on the back. So uh, luckily I was right down the road from my house and I was able to swap around with my dad's truck and get everything sorted. But uh, currently my truck's at uh, the GMC dealer and it'll either need to be repaired or fully replaced, uh, the transmission that is. So since that's in the shop, we basically just have my dad's truck. And the plan for this job is actually to use the excavator and the skid steer because um, we have to pull some stumps, do some grading, and then move uh, some topsoil. So it kind of hits both of these. And what we're going to do here is load this up. But um, of course, of course, with the skid steer here, it's really uh, ass heavy. So on this, uh, so on the ramp here, going up to the dovetail, it actually folds the ramps up, and the dovetail gets pushed down. So it really needs some sort of jack underneath it. Since I don't have a jack and I don't really want to weld anything on this right at the moment, I just made up some four by six blocks and screwed them together. I'll put these underneath the dovetail when I drive up and then I'll keep it from really pushing down and tilting me back and flipping up the ramps. What I'm gonna do now is load this skid steer up and drive it on over, drop the machine off, and then tomorrow we can bring the excavator with the dump trailer to take out some material and stumps for them and then next day come back or later that day once we're done the job do the round trip again to get the other machine so uh, the joys the joys of things breaking Okay, I just got back from dropping off the skid steer, hooked up the dump trailer real quick, and now I'm gonna put the excavator in that so we can bring that over and then hopefully take a couple stumps away or some fill from the job.
All right, so here on the uh, job to basically take down this berm on the side of the road here. And what ends up happening is, is all the water shed from the driveway on both ends, pools in the middle here. And the goal is to get it to flow out to the side. So we're going to take both machines and carve down the top of this berm here so that he can mow it as well as have it swale down by the bottom and then fill about a foot to two feet of this bottom portion with a one and a half inch angular stone so it can drain without pulling too much sediment. And then back here uh, towards this section is probably the thickest of it. So a lot of this material will have to pull out as well as these bushes. And then since he's pretty close to wetlands, but he can still put some material right off the edge of his property here, uh, we're going to take the majority of it and starting from this end, basically pull that material and be dumping it in this corner and extending this back portion. So the plan will be to start back here with the excavator and basically be making piles and carving out with that and using the skid steer to cut and transport it and then do the grading and spreading of loam with the skid steer. Uh, there's a couple of stumps in here. There's a pretty big one in the, in the front, but it's rotted. So hopefully we can get that out and uh, get everything looking good. All right, so it really hasn't been my day. Uh, my dad got in and started this and it stopped working. And that's because there was hydraulic fluid leaking everywhere. And that's because the feed line or the return line, I'm not sure which, but the second hose back on the hydraulic reservoir for the um, radiator um, came loose. Um, so, so that was spraying hydraulic fluid all over the, the bottom of the pan down here in the engine. Um, but luckily 
we were able to pop off this cover here and put the hose back on so now we gotta get some more fluid for it but it's really hard to get to these the nuts on the back of those carriage bolts um, so fun times All right, so we got a couple different options for hydraulic oil. <clears throat> Put this in first.
Yeah, sight glass disappeared. Okay. Just so you can put that right in there. All right, so we put about three, three and a half gallons into the uh, hydraulic tank, and we're pretty much full through the sight glass there. Um, hopefully nothing else goes wrong, <laughs> and we can use this today because I'm only halfway through this berm, and we've easily got 30 to 40 yards of uh, material over here that's not easy to move with just the excavator. But I gotta put some fuel in it. And I'm keeping my eyes open for a good transfer tank. Um, I've looked at a whole bunch, um, but I'm trying to find something that would go well in the back of my truck and still let me use my tonneau cover, uh, or uh, be something that I can, you know, tote around that's just bigger than the five gallon tanks. So that is the challenge now.
Well, the fun never ends through a track on this thing, so <laughs> it's in a nice, inconvenient spot as usual. I have to prop up the back and the front and see if we can pry it back on, maybe use the excavator to push it in. All right, of course the GoPro stopped recording. I gotta get a new one, uh, either GoPro or another brand, because this camera turns off literally all the time, even if it's in the shade, nothing wrong with it. So uh, we got the track back on, uh, took like 40 minutes because it was on the inside really jammed up, but uh, now I'm just gonna continue down here. I basically have maybe another 50 feet, and then there is a uh, pretty big stump right in here that uh, is pretty rotted, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, and then the goal will be to, of course, have all the water drained on this side and then catch off right around where that stump is, so.
trees in a little landscape fashion for them. And now we will be putting down loam and then stone along the edge.
So I'm back to spread another 10 yards of loam. We decided to do a bit more in the back. And for that, I just brought the tractor to be as minimally invasive as possible. Okay, just finished up for real this time. We got uh, 20 yards of loam spread up here with about four tons of one and a half inch stone. So this will be nice and mowable for him. And his plan is to get this all hydro seeded since it's the middle of the summer. That'll make it, that'll make it such that it'll grow in nice and hold on the hill here. Won't get totally washed out. And then back here, we added in another 10 yards of loam to finish up around the pen area and this pretty much covered everything we even added on the end here such that uh you got another you know a couple hundred square feet a yard and lifted the whole back about six feet so it's looking pretty good on to the next one <laughs> 